Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who was, you know, formerly, as, as you probably remember, a, a Tea Party congressman, you know, one, one of these cokehead guys. And uh, 34 Republican members of Congress were corresponding with Meadows about ending our democracy, about ignoring the, the result of the election two years ago and simply saying, hey, you know, Trump is president. We now have a dictator for life. It's the end of the American experiment. And, uh, you know, but the billionaires will get bigger tax cuts now going forward. Uh, fossil fuels will, you know, be our primary energy source forever. Uh, when the planet starts melting down, we'll all be dead. So, uh, hey, let's go for it, say these old rich white guys by and large. Congressman Ralph Norman, who uh, is a Republican from South Carolina, wrote, Mark, in seeing what's happening so quickly and reading about the Dominion lawsuit attempt to stop any meaningful investigation, we are at a point of no return in saving our republic. Our last hope is invoking martial law. Please urge the president to do so. Now, he spelled Marshall, M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L, -L, like in the Marshall Plan to help Europe. Um, you know, it was named, as I recall, after uh, General Marshall, but Martial law is actually spelled M-A-R-I-T-A-L, as in, if I'm, if I'm spelling it right, <laughs> I may not be I'm lousy with those kind of things just in my head. I have to see it written down, but um, yeah, M-A-R-T-I-A-L. Anyway, it, it, what it means is having to do with the military. Martial, like military. And military law means that there is no more constitution. It means that the military runs the government and that the government is run under the rules of the military. Well, the military has its own, essentially, its own constitution. It's called the Uniform Code of Military Justice, the UCMJ. When you join the military, you agree to be... I'm, I'm, I'm lacking a word here, not ruled by, but you, you, you agree to conduct yourself under the rules of and be bound by the UCMJ instead of the Constitution in those areas where they conflict. In other words, um, in the military, you have no free speech rights. You have no First Amendment rights. They're just gone. You have no Second Amendment rights. The, the military can decide when you have a gun and when you don't. You have no Fourth Amendment rights. The, the military can go through your, you know, if you live on base, they can go through your home anytime, you, anytime they want. They can go through your office anytime they want. You have no Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. You have no Fourteenth Amendment right to, uh, uh, you know, for equal protection under the law. And this is what this congressman, Ralph Norman, a uh, representative from uh, North Car uh, South Carolina, was asking Mark Meadows and Donald Trump to put into place. End the American experiment, suspend the Constitution, replace it with the UCMJ, and put the United States under the control of the military. Now, a new poll is showing that 61% of Republicans have abandoned Trump. Not because they object to his brutality or his lawlessness. You know, when you dig into the, into the survey, you discover that you know, they're abandoning Trump because they think he can't win elections. And he can't. I've been, I've been telling you this for two years now. That, you know, Donald Trump has damaged goods. He shot himself in the foot. He, you know, even with his own supporters. And, you know, in all probability, he's going to prison. Now, that actually might work to his benefit in a small way. You know, when Hitler went to jail, Hitler went to prison for a little over a year, I believe, uh, in the neighborhood of two years, as I recall. That's where he wrote Mein Kampf. He came out of jail a martyr and a hero. Netanyahu got arrested and, uh, you know, for, for uh, and, and is being actively prosecuted right now for corruption, for bribery and corruption. It won him re-election as uh, prime minister of Israel. Uh, uh, Ken Paxton down in Texas got busted seven years ago for securities fraud. The government's still trying to prosecute him. And yet he keeps getting reelected as secretary or excuse me, as attorney general for the state of Texas. As the chief law enforcement officer, guy under indictment. 
In a Republican world, that makes you a martyr. So, you know, Trump still maybe remotely has a small chance, but I don't think so. And, and I think this poll, 61% of Republicans have abandoned him, really proves this, which raises the question, where are these people going and why? Which I would also ask you, along with our, you know, anything goes holiday, you know, whatever you want to talk about today. Where do you think they're going to go? It's looking like they're going to DeSantis. They're jumping on the Ron DeSantis train, um, you know, who's largely, uh, DeSantis is largely indistinguishable from Trump when it comes to supporting cruel, racist, white male supremacist, Christo-fascist policies. And this is happening because Donald Trump la launched a modern day authoritarian fascist movement. And he did it with the help of a modern day authoritarian fascist, Vladimir Putin, and the handful of American and foreign billionaires. And the authoritarian followers who embraced Trump are just now, you know, looking for another authoritarian leader to follow. And, and DeSantis is out there waving his flag around saying, hey, look at me. You know, I think Greg Abbott might have had presidential ambitions at one point, but I, I, I suspect he, he's probably going to remain, you know, to stay happy as governor of Texas. You got Ted Cruz, who wants to be the new fascist, you know, uh, guardian of the, of the realm. You've got Marco Rubio talking like this. I mean, you know, Rick Scott, obviously Josh Hawley, uh, uh, Tom Tillis. There, there, there's just, there's this list of uh, Rick Scott. I think I mentioned Rick Scott. Uh, you know, with this is a 10 point plan to destroy America or, or what was a 14 point plan uh, to uh, end Social Security and Medicare, among other things. But the big mistake that so many pol political observers make and you and you hear this every day in the news is arguing or believing that Trumpism is all about Trump. And it's not. Trump is just a cutout. He just happened to be in the right place at the right time with the right message to resonate with a white, a, a, an aggrieved white racist, Christo-fascist Republican base that the Republican Party has been nurturing since Nixon's Southern strategy and since Reagan declared that he was running for president on a, plat, on a, on a white person's platform. His, his, his first speech as an official candidate for president of the United States was down in Philadelphia, Mississippi, the, the place where Schwarmer Goodman and Cheney were, were murdered, the three civil rights workers were murdered and, and their bodies buried. I mean, they made a movie out of this, Mississippi Burning. And that's where Reagan kicked off his campaign. His vice president, George Herbert Walker Bush, became president based on an ad about Willie Horton, a black guy. His, uh, Bush's son became president because five Republicans on the Supreme Court handed it to him. And of course, Trump became president because he did the same thing Nixon and, and Reagan had done. He reached out to white supremacist racists. This is not the first time this has happened in the United States. As Arnold Toynbee pointed out, it, it seems like you know the, the, life, the average human lifespan is 80 years. And about every 80 years, we, we go through one of these things. 80 years ago, it was the Great Depression and World War II. 80 years before that, it was the Panic of 1856 and the Civil War. 80 years before that, it was the Panic of 1771 and the American Revolution. Do we need an economic crash and a world war to, to complete this cycle? I don't think so. I think it's possible, maybe even tending toward probable. But maybe not. Maybe we can fix this. And that the crisis we're going to have is not going to be the rise of fascism in Germany. And it's not going to be, you know, the South uh, declaring war against us. And it's not going to be uh, England, you know, blockading the port of Boston. That the crisis we face is going to be hundreds of oath keepers working in the Department of Homeland Security. It's going to be, you know, this, this fascism and this fascist movement embedded within the Republican Party and within our government. And the question now is whether, you know, in this era of mass media and the internet, 
this information infrastructure that we have and this political infrastructure that we have here in the United States will be strong enough to stop the spread of today's new fascism and succeed in awakening and alerting America's people. I, you know, I think they're beginning to. It's not about Republican versus Democrat. This is about authoritarian fascism versus democracy in our republic. And the stakes are much bigger than those 128 members of Congress who voted to end American democracy on January 7, 2021. All Republicans, 10 of them senators. It's much bigger than their political careers. It's the fate and future of our country and frankly, of democracies all around the world. Do you think our media is up to this, to this moment? Do you think they're even recognizing this moment? Or our politicians, including our democratic politicians? I'm, I'm concerned.